coming up on Daybreak, a local car organization is helping raise money for police officer Mark Preby and his family. We're also talking about how a popular museum in Fort Leonard Wood is getting set to reopen and what goes into that. Stay with us. That's all this morning and this hour for you on Daybreak. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Today is Monday, June 22nd. I'm Jennifer Abreu. And I'm Joe Morano. As we are here to kick off your week with you, and so is meteorologist Elisa Rafa. She's out there this morning and taking a look at some weather. Not too bad as we walk out the door, right? Exactly. It's looking pretty good for the rest of the week. It's, it seems like in the, the middle of the week mm -hmm. will be even better. Yeah, we're starting out warm and muggy this morning. A couple of storms today, and then a nice stretch starts tomorrow. Feeling better, too. That's always good. It helps you get through the week, you know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Having the sun out is just gets you energized. Yeah, especially when it helps you get a little bit closer to Friday, right? Talking about that already on a Monday. <laughs> um, but we're starting out pretty warm and humid this morning. We've got some dry roads in Branson with just some clouds. It is 66 degrees on southerly winds with dew points in the middle 60s. We dodged a bullet. Some storms went pretty much around the Ozarks overnight. So we're starting out with just some dry conditions. And just a few clouds. It's 71 degrees in West Plains, 68 in Harrison, 70 degrees in Fayetteville, and 66 degrees in Candidon. Dew points are in the middle and upper 60s, so it's pretty humid out there this morning. It just feels a little bit soupy and sticky, or in the middle of that muggy meter there. And you can see we've got some oranges and yellows on the map, so not quite the most comfortable start. We'll have some scattered showers and storms out there today, spotty enough where most of the roads should wind up being dry. Um, if you're waiting for a package, it could be wet out there. Um, we'll have some of those scattered showers and storms with that temperature at 85 degrees. Now that storm threat will come with a marginal severe risk that we have to talk about. The nice weather returns by the middle of this week. Details in your full forecast coming up in 10 minutes. We have some breaking news that we're following for you this morning. Springfield police have confirmed that two gunshot victims were dropped off at Cox North Hospital last night before midnight. Authorities believe the incident happened on North Elizabeth Avenue. That's where we're taking a live look right now as there is still an active scene there. Both individuals are listed in critical condition. Authorities are still investigating too. We will continue to follow this and bring you updates throughout the hour. A Springfield car organization, the Cruising Carney Group, hosted a fundraiser parade last night for police officer Mark Preby and his family. People donated money to participate in the cruise yesterday. Officer Preby's injuries could cost him millions in medical bills, and that's according to a recently filed lawsuit. And recently, he moved to a rehab facility in Colorado for treatment. More than $1,400 were raised last night. Beth Brashear says the group knew it had to give their support. It is a huge cause, and that is what we are saying is that's our way to give back to this community, is we can do a fundraiser, and it's all car related, but we are, you know, we're not destroying anything, we just want to cruise, and what better way to do it than to cruise? It's just an outlet, just like golfing is an outlet, but we give them with the cars, they're with our cars, they're hot rods. And we just want everybody to know we're out there. You know, we don't mind helping the community. Preby did file a lawsuit against John Ruth last week, and we have those updates and information about his recovery on our website, OzarksFirst.com. We've got a story for you that's positively Ozarks. A night of music was held in town yesterday in support of a beloved local music venue in downtown Springfield. As musicians came together for an outdoor jam session with hopes of raising money for the Outland Ballroom. The Outland has been on the verge of bankruptcy, and a few days ago the owners announced they were selling the venue, but that sale was called off after a wave of social media backlash. Now the community is stepping up to make sure that it can keep its doors open. Stanley Jones says he's been coming to the shows at the Outland for years. I can't put it into words. It's this place is is like uh, I've almost lived here. We would come up here uh, sometimes two or three times a week, uh, sometimes more. I've known people down where I live my entire life that aren't as close and good as good of friends as the folks that I've met here in the last say five to ten years. Those that helped organize this jam session say they plan to have another one next week. 
We have new coronavirus cases to report locally. The Christian County Health Department says the county has two new cases, bringing the total up to 40. That includes 35 confirmed and five probable. Overall, nine cases are active in Christian County right now. The two new cases are considered community spread, meaning the health department could not link them to any other positive cases. Some other news around the Ozarks. This week is a statewide week-long campaign that's going to launch focusing on pedestrian safety. The Missouri Coalition for Roadway Safety says warmer weather and easier COVID-19 restrictions have more people out on the road. The coalition is reminding people to make eye contact with your pedestrians and with the drivers and don't assume that you are seen by each other. If you're in a stalled vehicle, stay inside until help arrives and only cross the road at intersections or crosswalks. Last year, 110 pedestrians were killed in Missouri. 307 were seriously injured. The Roadway Safety Coalition says the top contributing factors in these accidents were failure to yield, alcohol or drug impairment, and distraction. You can find more stats about this at SaveMoLives.com. Fort Leonard Wood is preparing to reopen its John B. Mahaffey Museum Complex for service member education next month. Nigel McDonald is in the studio now to share what goes into that process of reopening. Nigel, good morning. Well, good morning, Jen. The complex is conducting inventory checks on tens of thousands of artifacts across its three museums, chemical corps, engineer, and military police. Now, museum staff say they normally check 5% of their total inventory every month, but the U.S. Army Center of Military History is requiring a full inventory check. Scott Franklin serves as a collection curator for the U.S. Army Engineer Museum, which Franklin says holds around 11,000 artifacts. He says these checks work to ensure museums have proper records of historical pieces before they reopen for service member education. Since we've been closed, it has impacted our ability to train soldiers, and that's what we're all about, uh, is making sure that, uh, that the soldiers that come through Fort Leonard Wood know their history, are proud of their history, and we're hoping that, that uh, we want that to inspire them uh, to be uh, uh, good engineer soldiers or good chemical soldiers uh, or good MP soldiers. You know, we, that's, what, that's what we're here for, is, is the soldier training aspect. Well, Franklin says the U.S. Army Center of Military History expects all inventory checks to be completed no later than July 31st. Thank you, Nigel. We're starting out warm and muggy out there this morning, but we're dry. Some showers and storms possible this afternoon with a strong one. Talk about this marginal severe risk coming up next. From Color 10 Ozarks First, Jennifer Abreu, Joe Morano, and weather with meteorologist Alisa Rafa. This is Color 10 News Daybreak.